Hello, human. It is I. It is I. It is me. It is me, your fellow human. I could appear a bit jittery, like a bit like nervous or something. I'm as nervous as I am excited. I am filming with a camera for the very first time in my life. I own a camera now, finally. And I think I'm overthinking the outcome. I don't know jack about cameras. I watched a couple of tutorials to make the settings, you know, to fix the settings for a good output. But I don't know if it's going to be good. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't know, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just very nervous about it, but I hope it does come out well. So it's been three years now since I moved to France and um, I had asked, I'd done like a Q and A thing on Instagram. I don't know who I am, who I believe I, who I think I am to be asking people to add, to ask me questions for YouTube. First of all, how many people watch my YouTube channel? <laughs> Thankfully, I got a couple questions. I don't know if it's, a, it's in focus or not, but I have a few questions. And then after answering the questions that you know I got on Instagram, I would talk about cult culture shocks. I'd shared um, a couple uh, things that I found really like shocking when I arrived in France at first, but. I, 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 feel, I feel like the more I live in France, the more I learn things that are like, oh, okay, okay, you know. Um, so I will be sharing like more culture shocks. So the first question here is, <clears throat> how easy is it to get a job that allows one stay back after graduating in France? It's not easy. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to, like, oh no, it's easy, just come to France. It's not, it really isn't because um, I don't think anything is easy in France really, or just like here in, in Europe altogether. You can get lucky and things would work out this quick for you. But just keep in mind that it's possible, of course, like people get jobs after finishing their studies, but it's not easy, you have to start earlier to start applying for jobs like let's say um usually you have like um your internship which would be like for four to six months to end your studies like usually your masters <clears throat> i don't know how it works for bachelor's degree i would only speak for what i know so if you're finishing your internship three months from from now you start from then to start applying because if you wait until you're done and then you start, you start applying for jobs, it can take a while. It can really take a while. So people get jobs after like finishing their studies, but it's not easy. <laughs> Nothing is easy here, actually, because you work, everything you, you get, you actually have to put in the work to get it done. Nobody's going to come and knock on your door and be like, oh no, have you applied for jobs, babes? No you have to actually do it and fix your cv fix your linkedin and um, apply for jobs put your cv on like websites for you know job applications in france do all of that and ask uh, some of your friends that are already working with companies to do something called cooptation it's like suggesting you to their company and hopefully if it clicks you go um, for interview obviously they will only hire you if they think you are, you are a good fit they're not going to hire you because your friend works there i think that's about it <laughs> the next question says how is your love life <laughs> um um i think you may have been misguided because on this channel we talk about moving to france getting your visa here the life in france the culture shock the things i experience 
I'm not here to talk about a love life. What is that? How is it? What is love? Define it. What is life? Okay, I'm alive. That's life. What is love? Be careful. Let's be serious, please. Who is your favorite writer? That goes without saying. Amanda Ngozi Adichie. But I don't just like her because she's a writer. Like, like is so little a word to, to define what I feel for that woman. Um, I love who she is and what she represents. I love reading her, listening to her, watching her changed a lot of things in my life. I think if I talk about Chimamanda Adichie, it would take like this whole video. But I should point out that this year I've, I've read a couple new, the well, new authors to me, they've been there for a long time, but like I read um, some of their books this year and I became obsessed with them. <laughs> Our next question, what's your favorite book of the month of September? We're in October now. Well, I, I, put, I put up this Q&A thing a while ago. It's been like, a lo like two or three weeks now. So it makes sense. Um, what books did I read in September? Let me check. I'm going to check my Goodreads app real quick. I read, I read uh, Swallow by Sefi Atta and Tomorrow Died Yesterday by Chimeka Garrix in September. And Tomorrow Died Yesterday was... It was heavy, it was triggering, but my favorite book that I read in September. Um, next question. Would you marry me one day? <laughs> look, 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 let me tell you people. Let's be serious. Please, let us be serious. What is, what is a marry? Define, define that. Define that. Define it. <laughs> I can finally ask your hand in marriage. Why is everybody talking about marriage? I'm a child. Do you want a child bride? I am a child. I am a child. What is your greatest weapon in any given trouble? Weapon. <laughs> I'm laughing because I don't have any weapon. When I have any given trouble, which seems to be happening a lot in recent times, um, I just cry. <laughs> what do you do when you have given... I cry and I feel sad. <sighs> Sometimes, just, you know, tell God to... I'm like, God, say, look, I'm, I'm struggling, man. I'm really, really struggling and, you know, if you don't want me to join you there, do something. Do something about what I'm feeling, you know. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice, you know. Um, so, I cry, I feel it out and I keep going. I don't have a choice. Like, I don't, I don't think there's any, I don't have any kind of... Um, thing that I do each time or like I'm you know sad or I have something bad that has happened to me I just cry <laughs> I just cry I cry and you know the next day I go I have to go to work because if I don't go to work I won't be able to pay my rent and then I become homeless so and nobody wants that right so um, yeah <laughs> I cry and I sometimes journal about it and um, I tell God to do something about it really because like, what else can I do? I gotta keep going. <laughs> do we have another question? Let me see. Hi, what inspires and motivates you? Um, the fact that I don't want to be homeless. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think the me of last year would, would give you like, this motivates me, that motivates me, this motivates me, but honestly, the me of now, after having grieved, well, still grieving, um, just the idea of not wanting to be homeless, right? I have to go to work even though I cried myself to sleep the last day, the, you know, the night before. 
I have to go to work and I have to work and I have to earn money and I have to pay my rent. So I think the idea of not wanting to be homeless motivates me. I have to do what I have to do so I don't become homeless. But yeah, on a serious note, I think this might sound cliche, but the only thing, the only thing holding me together, the only thing that makes me able to get through each day is love love and i say that in the most sincere way ever it's the love i have in my life when i think of the love of my mom think of the love of my siblings think of the love of my friends i'm like you know a couple of people still want me to be alive so i just have to be alive right really i on, i'm not trying to sound quirky or cool or whatever but if the people that i currently have in my life if they were not dear whoa me i would not be doing this youtube video that i'm doing you know i would have been i would not they do a, a memorial service for me because whoa uh, this life is not easy it's hard it's very very difficult so that's the truth. It's love. It's a love in my life that keeps me alive, keeps me together, holds me together. It's like the, the glue that, you know, holds me together and keeps me going. I obviously want to make my mom proud, make my siblings proud, make everybody that loves me and that I love proud. You know, so yeah, make myself proud too, I guess. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, beautiful girl. Um, I think that's that's all the questions. I got I got that's all the questions I got from Instagram. That's it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a celebrity, so <laughs> I don't have like a million questions where I have to be like, oh no, guys, I don't I can't answer all of them. I'm just going to pick my favorite ten and answer. <laughs> I can't, I, it's not possible. I've not gotten to that level yet. Um, so, moving on to um, more culture shocks, like culture shocks, things that I have come to understand <laughs> um, about French people that, you know, is a bit shocking. Um, it's just a few things, but, um, so at first when i came obviously i noticed that french people blow their nose anywhere like they literally just blow their nose anywhere you could be having lunch and they blow their nose like while eat while you know at the dinner table at the lunch table whatever at first i didn't it didn't click i'm just like well, maybe this person is just like this but like now especially now that i'm working and i'm like spending like literally every day with French people, I've come to realize that they blow their nose anywhere, anytime, and they don't feel self-conscious about it. And as a Nigerian, <laughs> I didn't grow up with that, you know, idea that I can blow my nose anywhere. If I'm like in the off well, not office, if I'm, if I'm with people, I have to like step aside and blow my nose and then wash my hand or something and come back. And I'll be so self-conscious that I have to blow my nose. You get my point? But here, they just take their mouchoir and while you're eating. And I'm like, I look at everybody and everybody seems like to be cool with it. Like everybody, everybody's just like, you know, living their normal lives. So it's shocking to me as a Nigerian because that's not something that we do. But then now, obviously, <laughs> It's been three years since, you know, I've been here. Now, I sometimes, especially like when I have a cold and I'm at work and I have to go to the toilet all the time because I want to, I'm so self-conscious that I have to blow my nose. I have to leave my seat, go to the toilet, blow my nose, come back and then do that like five minutes later. The fact that they don't care that you're blowing your nose because they blow their nose anyway, any, anywhere, anytime. In my sometimes I'm just like, mm, I don't think I want to go all the way to the time. I'm just like, mm, blow it like, you know. 
<laughs> I'm doing it, I'm checking, if anybody's looking, I'm nobody, everybody's just typing away on their laptops and I'm like, okay, that seems fine, I guess, <laughs> you know, so yeah, that is something that um, was and still is shocking. <laughs> um, another thing that I've come to understand about, I don't know if it's just France or the whole of Europe, um, you know how in Nigeria, as in, I'm, I'm speaking like as a Nigerian, I keep forgetting that I have a microphone here. Um, in Nigeria, restaurants are open all the time, I believe. I think, I believe restaurants are open all the time. You can walk into a restaurant and eat, and eat at, at any time. But here I've come to realize that during lunch, which is like lunch hour, which is usually like from 12 to 2 p.m., restaurants are open for serving like food then after two they would serve like just drinks like beer juice alcohol and stuff like that but they will not serve like proper food and if you go they'll tell you um, we are closed like we're not we're not serving food they would resume serving food around like dinner time which is like 7 p.m you know ish and as a Nigerian, that, that was shocking to me because us Nigerians, we just want to, like, it's like, it's like an amazing thing when we have like lots of customers that want to eat, like, regardless of the time. But here, they don't care. Lunch hour is 12 to 2, and we stop serving food. If you come after 2, that means you want a drink or you want, you know, aperitif, like, tiny snacks, if they, if they sell that. Other than that, no, nothing. So that is very shocking to me. But then, of course, like you have like fast foods, the, the fast foods that sell like burgers and, you know, sandwiches, um, kebabs and all of that. They are open all the time. But like if you want to have like a proper dining or proper lunch, food, entree, uh, main course and main course why did i say course main course and dessert you have to be there from 12 to 2 and after that um, you can go eat some fast food or something so as a nigerian that is shocking to me um this is something that i can talk about from now till tomorrow because it affected me at a time that i needed somebody the most individualism like I don't know I don't know if it's a thing of like the whole of Europe or just France but French people can mind their business when I lost my friend Tim last year I was on the phone with my friend with my other friend Amaka and she was telling me about it I was on the road like I was going home when you know, I was on the phone talking about it here, like hearing about, you know, how he's dead and all of that. I broke down with my phone. I was on the road. I fell down to the floor and I was crying. I was still on the phone. I was wa I was wailing. When I say I was wailing because that it hit me, it was so shocking. People were just going their way, passing. I, I could hear them passing. Not one person one person nobody stopped to say hey are you okay or sava nobody nobody if it were to be in nigeria and i am like you just fall to the ground and you're crying somebody not even somebody people would rush you and be like how far are you okay are you okay what happened to you what have, have you eaten Somebody will be, oh, bring water for her, bring water for her. They don't care what has happened to you. They just want to make sure that you're okay. Man, it's not the case here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's about it for the culture shocks. And of course, like, as time goes on, when I learn more things that, you know, hits me hard, I'll be like, hmm, what I could say, remember. So obviously, <clears throat> culture shocks are culture shocks. It doesn't necessarily mean that this is good, this is, this is bad. It's just me reacting to something that I'm not used to as a Nigerian that is now living in France. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you to the few people that asked me questions. <laughs> um, thank you and I will see you in the next video. I wanted to do Gen Z love. I will see you in the next video. Mm. <laughs>